Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chaldean Cultural Center weekly discussion series. Uh, we're a little bit late today because we uh, encountered some technical uh, difficulties, but thank you, Omari, for being so patient. <laughs> Our guest today is Omari He's the Executive Director of Cultural Source. He's also the Chairman of Michigan Council uh, Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs. I told him I was going to have a hard time saying that one. Um, our program is um, hosted by the Chaldean Cultural Center, but in collaboration with U of M Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CMN TV. And I am so happy today to have Omari on our show because uh, he and uh, quite a few of his of the staff at Culture Source have been incredibly helpful uh, during these very trying times. Um, I. We are a member of Culture Source, the Chaldean Cultural Center, and he's going to talk a little bit about what Culture Source does. But um, first, why don't we talk a little bit about who you are, Omari, and your background and how you got involved in this work? Great. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. And, um, you know, so thinking about how I got to this work is, is kind of fun because it actually takes me back to Tallahassee, Florida. So I was born and raised in the South in Tallahassee, Florida. So I'm not a native Michigander. And so this time of year always is a little bit uh, tricky getting used to the snow and getting ready for the snow and the cold. Um, but um, so when I was in Tallahassee, you know, I, I um, really developed a love and a fondness for the clarinet and was in band and orchestra all the way through college at Florida State University. But while I was doing those activities, um, both in grade school and college, um, I was also not just playing on stage, but organizing people and, you know, putting together different kinds of events and, um, and also trying to think about new types of things that we could do in and through the arts. And so then I ended up coming to the University of Michigan to get a graduate degree in clarinet performance, still wanting to try to be a professional clarinetist. Um, and while I was doing that, I ended up getting an internship at the University Musical Society affiliated with the University of Michigan. And it really opened me up to the world of um, to the administrative side of the arts, um, to the organizing side of the arts. And, um, and I've really found a, a really nice match of all my skills in that kind of um, more in the office than on the stage, though I very much appreciate what artists do on stage and in museums, what, um, what you know, people who create culture are doing every day in their communities. And it's, it's my joy and pleasure to be working at Culture Source now and, and to be supporting that work happening throughout the Southeast Michigan region. So um, next time we're gonna have you play the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I am retired actually. Uh, <laughs> thank thankfully retired. I'm gonna have to listen to you play the clarinet on one of those. <laughs> um, well, from what I heard from one of your staff, Ken, um, she said that since you joined uh, Culture Source, um, she they felt like it was such a blessing because you really, I guess, I don't know if you gave it a makeover or whatever you did or make, you know, but they were very, um, very happy about the changes that you made. Um, the reason I bring this up is because right now with what's happening, uh, this is like a lot of major changes are, are occurring. Um, and Culture Source is one of the organizations that when we were told that, you know, this pandemic is like really real, you guys are going to pack up and go home and we're going to work from home. Your organization, within a couple of days, we received an email. Uh, you started doing weekly uh, meetings, online virtual meetings, that I got to tell you, they were so instrumental, given what we were going through, because we really, no one was knowing what's going to happen, like tomorrow, you know, are we going to close down, are we not? Nobody wants to close down, but we were at least listening to these all these uh, different CEO, CEOs express their stories and their struggles, I got to tell you, that was very instrumental. Aside from the fact that you guys were having all these different grants, mini grants and regular grants available to people. And, um, you know, first of all, how were you able to manage that? How did you manage to make that shift this quickly and to kind of try to attend to people's needs? And the reason that question is very important is so that, you know, like uh, I had mentioned to you before the interview, we really want people, especially in arts and culture organizations and even businesses in arts and culture, 
to see what maybe they can do during this difficult time. And honestly, really, Omari, you've been uh, really instrumental in helping give an example of that. So please share what got you to create that weekly, what, what was the importance about it? Why did you uh, create that weekly um, discussion uh, or the meetings that were happening on a weekly basis? You know, um, thanks for saying that. It's just like, a, it's a nice affirmation um, that we were on the right track with our work. And I'll say, I'll actually go back a little bit because um, I think it kind of gives a sense about how we got to where we were. You know, when I started in September of 2017, one of the first things I did with our team was clarify our mission, vision. We'll clarify our mission and then we actually developed a new vision um, statement and developed seven guiding principles. And uh, because I was really feeling like we needed some grounding, we needed uh, a clear sense of what we were about and why we mattered and why we existed. And so when you ask this question about, um, you know, how were we able to act as fast as we did when it came to this crisis time, part of that is because we had been investing over the last, you know, um, two and a half years in just understanding um, how we could best serve our community, uh, what our kind of most important values were. And that allowed us to act very quickly with our staff, with our board and with our stakeholders. The second bit is that, you know, we at our core, you know, I talk about culture source really doing three things. We convene people, we get funding to them and we advocate for them. And, you know, one of the things that we also understood was that just bringing people together and people being together is very helpful, especially in a crisis. You know, people are just looking for either a shoulder, like honestly, like a shoulder to cry on. Um, sometimes people are looking for more ideas from people who think differently because they're maybe in a different work context or geographic context. And also people are just um, kind of looking to uh, not feel alone and that not feeling alone, I think goes a long way, you know, in, in helping giving people some strength and courage in, um, in dark times. And so, you know, we said, how can we, how can we be a real resource to people in these days? We know that we want to be a resource and we know that we're designed to be a resource because of that values work that we had done earlier. Um, and we also knew the power of convening. And so uh, we decided to start ha having those weekly CEO calls um, of executive directors, organizational leaders throughout the Southeast Michigan region to uh, just get everybody on the same page with um, what the scenario was in our communities and what we might do together. I'll, I'll say that those calls went so well and have gone so well that we had leaders ask us um, to add another call and that is for senior staff. So people that have a development director or a finance director, they wanted them to be on a similar call and similarly get, uh, you know, different kinds of information and build networks and all those things. And so, um, so you feel really good about, um, about how those are, are going. And I would just encourage folks to, you know, as, as you're going about your own business development, whether it's in the arts, whether it's in nonprofit or for-profit business, um, again, we, um, you can't be too clear. You can never be too clear about your, um, your vision and values. And, and I think getting clear about that and, and, you know, chipping away at that over time is very helpful. And, um, and also there is power in kind of unity and togetherness. I mean, it's a little cliche, but just continuing to develop a network and, and be part of a network, um, is really important. And, and that's one of the nice things about culture sources that we act as a, as an, easily accessible network for the cultural sector. Yeah, well, I totally agree that creating that kind of a community was very helpful. And, um, but you guys go, of course, beyond that, because like you said, with the funding, um, right immediately, there was um, one of the things that you have on your website is the various funding that are available from Michigan arts and culture organizations, um, including, um, especially there's a particular focus for the, um, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs. And I kind of wanted to understand that relationship between Culture Source and, and the Michigan uh, Council for Arts and Culture. So, you know, I happen to be the, um, the chairman of the State of Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs. Um, 
but outside of that, even before I started this job, Culture Source had established a relationship with um, with our State Arts Council, functioning as a regional regranter. And this is a you know a role in a relationship that um, a variety of people um, uh, kind of engage us in, where they understand that Culture Source has a lot of member organizations um, that were close to the um, or close to people doing the work on the ground, and as such, we can be a really um, helpful partner uh, or a resource to people in trying to get um, funding and resources to people um, so that they can do their, their work better. And so, um, in the case of the State Arts Council, we have that relationship where. Um, they send um, funding to us and I think it's eight other um, agencies across the state to do um, kind of smaller um, kind of county based city based um, grant making where we're processing a lot of different funds going out the door. Um, so that's one thing and I just say, you know, I really, um, I really believe in and really like our State Arts Council It does great work in making um, general operating dollars available to arts nonprofits or people that are doing arts projects. Um, certainly people, if they have, you know, um, a sidewalk that's um, busted or, you know, an HVAC system in their theater that needs repair or um, they want a new computer system to support activities in their museum, um, the State Arts Council is a great resource for those activities. Um, you just annually, there's a grant process and you apply. Um, Proposals are publicly reviewed, so it is a very fair and transparent. And um, and then we all keep our fingers crossed that we get funding. So um, so that's our relationship to the State Arts Council and um, and generally to people that are in um, kind of uh, government and private agencies that are that are attempting to get resources out to the community. It's our it's our pleasure to to be a, a conduit and a facilitator of that um, funding exchange. So can I share a personal experience with the machine? Please. Okay, because um, so when I uh, I was um, hired as executive director in uh, October of 2019 for the Chaldean Cultural Center. And shortly after that, we received a letter um, showing that I guess they had, uh, I, I hadn't been the one that submitted the grant, but uh, previously we had submitted a grant that we were you know denied. However, the review that they provided was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell you, um, they were so clear, concise. Really, they didn't leave any area like untouched. They commented on our social media, our programming, um, just financials, everything. That was priceless. I literally took that and we spent like almost six months going and checking every single thing they commented on. And um, and agreeing with it, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. like, oh, no, this is not. But no, it was really a fair evaluation of our situation. And so um, and listening to the reviews and this is really it's like a professional providing you with free. This is I mean, this is a costly service <laughs> if you want to go and get a grant writer to review this and and break it down. And um, having done all the hard work, which was very beneficial for us as an organization, regardless of whether this round we, uh, luckily we did receive the grant this um, round because of our hard work and it paid off. But regardless of whether we did or not, because we, because of the review and us going back, it made us a, a stronger organization. So that review, um, since then, I mean, we've applied to different um, grants and things, but I, I had never really seen it bro broken down to this degree. And I gotta say, I think that, I'm sure I'm, most organizations probably feel that way, that this was a very important service in itself that, that was provided. Um, and we were really grateful that um, this year alone, so the Michigan Council provided a COVID grant in the beginning of the, right, like this was immediately. And that was a smaller grant, but it was not for us. It didn't feel small. I mean, it was, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. more than the one that we got the regular grant in October, which we had submitted from, you know, I think, uh, well, no, we actually did submit. But the point is, we there was two opportunities for us this year that was, uh, you know, and it made a whole lot of difference. 
Um, and the first one covered like a, a, just like a month of our work. And that was a big deal, you know, because it helped us. It just gives you heart. Also, it's not just about that it's taking care of your um, employees. And, but it's also giving you heart when you see so many places collaborating and trying their best to keep arts and culture organizations operating. Um, you know, and I, on that note, uh, I, I was, I watched some of your interviews in the past and I, there was something that you, that you said that I really liked where it said, where there is crisis, there's great opportunity. So I want to ask you, Omari, like, what are the opportunities that people can find within their, their current struggle that they're experiencing? And I mean, this is even for us, like we found some of these opportunities, but we're still, we're still, as we put our vision for 2021, we still kind of don't know. And it's like, there's this big question mark. So how can we have um, that kind of vision or kind of something with what you did with Culture Source when you came in, you kind of worked during this period to prepare for what happened now, you know? So what would you advise and what are these? You know, I would say that um, there are three things that come to mind and I'm gonna try to try to remember them. Um, as, I, as you know, when I think about this idea of opportunities, um, one of them is certainly um, digital culture, digital engagement. I mean, we're doing it right now. You know, we're live on Facebook and then this will be recorded uh, and distributed in different ways. And I think the opportunity that many of us have is to really explore new digital tools tools, digital tools that are either free or that are low cost subscription, but that help us um, broaden the reach of our work or even just broaden the accessibility of our work. You know, there's some people that, you know, and say, oh, I would have gone to that museum, but, you know, I don't like to, I get tired when I walk too far or, you know, they'll say things like that. But there are certain digital tools um, that then make it so that that person can explore a museum, a collection, pictures, images, um, almost on demand at their home. And so I think there's an opportunity for people to actually expand the accessibility of their artistic work um, now by really using a variety of tools that maybe they never would have thought to, um, to, um, to engage or, or techniques to, to try. So that's one thing. The other thing is that, you know, we're in a time where, um, I mean, just about everybody is struggling. And in that, I think there are a variety of people who are more open than they would normally be to partnership. And so I think another opportunity is that there are people that we can talk to now who um, are probably willing to say yes to a wacky idea. They're willing to um, commit to doing something together and sharing costs in a way that they may not have um, been motivated to do in the past. Um, and to have those experiences be new, more efficient, more cost efficient, um, more exciting, bigger audience ways of working. And, um, and so the opportunity there is just this idea that there are collaborators out there that, um, that are uh, more accessible and, um, and more likely to be collaborators now, specifically because um, everybody is in, um, is desperate to innovate, you know? So that'd be the second thing. And then the third thing is much more of a process. I'd say it's it relates to the opportunity to just kind of slow down and assess the environment and to think, what could we actually do, you know? We're not able to do this the way we could. We're not able to do this the way we used to. We don't have access to that. So what's left and how can we still do our work? And, you know, we don't always, um, we don't always have access to those kinds of constraints that um, generate and spark creativity, but now we do, you know, now there are a ton of things that we can't do that constrain us. That means that, you know, it's like, I think about my grandmother making um, pound cakes and, you know, she was, you know, it's like, oh man, I forgot the milk. And it's like, well, why don't I use like, why don't I just like grind up some apples and use like apple juice? Cause I just need a little bit of moisture for this cake. And then you make the cake and it's like, oh, well that tasted interesting. And it's actually like easier, <laughs> blah, 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 you know? And so that's in the third opportunity of the moment is to, um, is to 
uh, is to use those constraints to generate new creative ideas. You know, um, I want to mention something. Um, one of the things that you said with regards to the digitalizing and then also the collaborations. Um, so in the midst of all of this, and this is why it was important that when the Michigan Council even that the grant that helped us even for a month, well, every day counts during these times and you have to keep your eye open on what's being available. Well, we received an email and I don't, I'm not sure if it was through uh, COACT or if it was through Culture Source because you guys have they have also like a, a load of, of <laughs> really wonderful information to provide. And um, and the U, U of M Detroit Center was offering um, like free training for, for organizations that wanted you know, to do virtual events. And I said, you know, we're interested because I, I realized like, okay, we need to do something. Um, so even if we were to get a grant and stayed open, but what would we be doing? And this is how this, discussion series, which was supposed to be monthly, but really ballooned right away because it was like, oh my gosh, there's speakers everywhere that are so incredibly interesting. And now we're not limited to those in Michigan. So for us, given that our roots are in um, Iraq and you know, with the history of Mesopotamia, we've connected, and this has been very exciting for me personally, being having been born in Baghdad, we've connected with archeologists and museum, uh, people in the, that work in the museum in Iraq. And they're just as excited. I mean, so this relationship wouldn't have happened without this. So this is one of the opportunities that you say in the collaborations. And we appreciate that you of them during the time, uh, I think this was the, during the summer that they provided this, um, they were able to, they had that some, you know, I guess, I, I don't know that it's free time, but it was like they wanted to do some kind of a service. And this was a big service for us that we were able to maintain and continue. Um, and then they stopped once the classes started, but they continued to support by sharing in their uh, newsletter and things like that. And you know, uh, sometimes it's like little things like that, they can balloon if you can just see the value in that. But everything you've just said with how to use the digital uh, opportunities and collaborations, those are two of the things that um, really we are grateful that have worked for us. And now with this programming that we have weekly, um, this is our main programming. You know, it takes a lot of time, but we've been able to connect to so many people and get the word out, including what your organization is. You know, this is an opportunity for people to learn about Culture Source and what Michigan Council is doing because they're doing like great work for so many people. Um, so, so really, like I, I totally agree with those points, and I can say from our experience that, that yes, they do work. We just kind of have to dig for these opportunities too, and not just shut the light and just feel like okay, you know what, this is forget it, like this is not worth it. It really is, That it is worth it. That training that was provided for us, that was spent over a month, it was totally worth it for us, so. Um, and, and you know, yeah. I have to give a shout out to, um, you know, to, to one, Frank Jonah, because, you know, he's on our board and I know he's, um, he and his wife, Judy, are, are very uh, supportive of the Cultural Center. Um, and I know that in part because Judy gave me a really rock star tour and um and when you say when you talked about mesopotamia i just i immediately like um remember some of the visuals in the um in the museum and and um it was just so enriching and helpful for me to hear her break down um her own cultural history and uh so it's really great well and judy um judy jonah is another example of somebody who really stepped in during these hard times so on a volunteer basis she was really working very very hard trying to help us maintain everything knowing that this is going to be difficult for us so she was like really our like rock during this time we were like thinking okay where do we go what do we do what do we grab onto? and she just kept us centered i could just that's a good word for her um so so really we could the least and i think like that's what you guys did too is just to kind of help people stay centered as you try to figure out your own things and where you're going um and you know with arts and culture um I mean, culture, arts, culture is part of our everyday lives. The beautiful thing about it is just it transcends religion and ethnicity and color. I mean, it's just it just transcends everything. I was um, I was nine years old when I read my first novel in Jordan. We were on like uh, we left Iraq and we had to wait in Jordan to get our visas to come here. I was nine years old and I read the first novel in Arabic, Gone with the Wind. 
thinking this is oh you know this is like preparing me to coming to the united states the 1800s and then so in my mind though however the writer was actually able to capture and i i couldn't see that okay well there is a there's a difference of who we are, our backgrounds. I actually was able to connect to a lot of these stories that she was sharing about her family, right? So when I came here, it was like such a culture shock because I was thinking like, this is, but because really it transcends um, so much. And, and this is just a, a small example. When you, when you see an art piece, you don't think, you know, you don't look at this art piece and then um, it doesn't get magnified by who has done it, although it could. But if it captures you, it doesn't matter who did that art piece. Now, because of this, and, and I'm assuming this is why this is so much importance is placed on trying to preserve the arts and culture organizations, but, um, but yet how has the pandemic changed our arts and culture sector and our society in general? And what, you know, what is the future, um, what do you think the future looks for us, given that you're really, you've really tapped in more than us on what's going on right now? So what does that look? How has it changed and what does that look for our future? I think people have, I think people have realized a deeper appreciation of, of creativity in their lives and art in their lives especially as some of the ways that they had normally engaged it were immediately inaccessible. And so, you know, um, so what I think about this moment is that um, people have realized, oh, I really love like being in a space where people are singing and I can feel the energy of the performer or I really love getting my hands dirty, um, you know, um, you know, working um, at a potter's wheel and, you know, with clay and making something and seeing the transformation from uh, kind of a ball of clay to like a highly functional and beautiful, um, you know, pot. Or, um, or people that are like, I just like going through pictures and manipulating them and doing, you know, so I think people, um, I think people are, have realized as, as some of these art spaces have, um, you know, had to sh either, you know, temporarily shut down um, and were spaces where they could do those kinds of creative creative activities, just how much they needed those activities in their lives. And so, um, and so from my perspective, you know, I'm trying to hold on to that as the, as the, as the, um, the optimism that the other side of this will, um, will be bright and will be, um, will be filled with, um, you know, great possibilities. Um, because yeah, the arts are, I mean, I love the arts for the, you know, for the reason that you describe them is that they're just so flexible. On one hand, it's a, you know, it's wonderful for an artist to put work out and to think that people are gonna see this this way and they're gonna believe this and think this. But when you put work out into the world, you've just like turned over the meaning and responsibility for creating meaning to the viewer or to the listener or, you know, and it's like, who knows what people are gonna, how people are gonna interpret it. And, um, and that's the beautiful thing because it really then leans into our humanity and, and the uniqueness of our perspectives and how we you know, bring in our cultural history and our family history and all these things into kind of understanding how we see the world and how we see art. So, so um, that's kind of one thing that I feel. The other thing that I feel, and I, I really do believe in the inherent um, kind of creativity of um of arts organizations and the can, can the, one of our seven guiding principles is creativity is fundamental and so i believe in that as a thing that will um continue to have um community members rally around these treasures or rally around these kind of landmarks rally around these um these spaces is where artists can be artists, um, historians can be historians, you know, people can share their stories and laugh and cry and do all the things um, because it's just so important to who we are. And so, um, so I hope that people will just, you know, always remember, you know, as they're, you know, doing whatever part of their life they're doing, that they'll always remember that, um, that the arts are a real core to it, you know. 
Thank you so much, Amari. I mean, we, we, it's really very meaningful for you to join us today and share your views. Um, you've been very positive and instrumental, especially, I mean, before the pandemic, but especially since then. Um, and we appreciate everything that you guys do, uh, your organization and the Michigan Council. Uh, we appreciate you guys very, very much. And we look forward that, you know, um, giving you another tour once all this kind of settles down. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.